Okay, to make this jig, I'm going to take my piece of three quarter inch plywood. I'm going to take the piece that we just cut that 45 degree cut on and I'm going to place it about halfway on and off uh, so it should look something like that. Okay, and I want it flush with the front of this piece of plywood and I'm simply just going to add two screws and screw it together. Make sure that you are nice and square because you want a nice square cut. Okay, on the bottom side of this jig, I'm going to go ahead and screw this little bracket on here so I can clamp it in my vise, um, on my bench vise. So I'm just going to about halfway. Okay, quick and simple, that's your jig. Uh, let's move over to the vise, I'll show you how to use it. Alright guys, over here at the bench vise, I've got the jig that we just made clamped into the vise, locked down. Now all I need to do is take my spline material, place it in, place it up against the vents, take a flush cut saw or a little saw of any sort, and follow that 45 degree cut on that fence. And it creates your little splines for you. And this is a great way to cut splines for any project that you have that requires miter splines. Just keep flipping the piece over and making your next cut. Okay, well you guys know what come next. We're going to go ahead and glue in the splines that we just cut. And uh, once we get them glued in, we'll get everything uh, flush cut and sanded down, and then we'll get the lid done. Okay, well while the splines are setting up and drying and everything in the box, I'm going to go ahead and start cutting the parts out for the two lids. Now I'm going to use the Spalta Pecan for the two lids just to give the box that little extra flare. Uh, like I said, we, we've used the continuous grain, uh, we've used the two different size splines, and now we're using a completely different wood uh, with some features in it, some nice grain and some spalting and stuff, to just give it that little extra mm, you know. Uh, so you can use any type of variations you want in any type of woods. Uh, raid your scrap bin and, and mix and match and just kind of uh, give the box their own little attitude and their own little character. Uh, the spots of the con for me is going to look really nice, especially with the finish that I'm going to put on it. Uh, what I want to do now is I've got the measurements of the box, and I know what size I need to make my lids, but I want to go ahead and cut my two parts out, a little bit oversized, and then we're going to fine tune everything in the next steps, because when all said and done, we want these lids, when they are on the box, we want them to kind of have a little bit of a snap to them, you know, so they're a tight fit, not a tight fit, but a snug fit. Uh, we don't want them just falling off loosely. We want a nice fit, so we're going to sneak up on all the cuts to get this box lid just right. So let's get started. I've got a pretty good sized piece of Spalta Pecan scrap here, um, and I want to really accent this figure some way on this lid. And I'm not quite sure, looking at this whole board, exactly what parts I want to cut out for the two lids. So to make it easier for me, I went ahead and cut a piece of cardboard out the same dimensions as the lid needs to be. And that will allow me to look at everything in a certain size. Uh, so I can determine do I want the grain and the figure uh, to run a little bit skewed or at an angle? Do I want it to run straight on? And once I find the two areas that I want to make my two lids out of, I can simply just trace this out and then cut the two parts out and work from there.
Okay guys, for a minute I want to talk to you about shop safety. Now we all, we all talk about shop safety from time to time, about wearing eye protection, ear protection, make sure that if you have long sleeves that they're rolled up and everything. But no matter how safe you think you are, accidents do happen when you least expect them. Now as I was cutting the parts out for the lid, I had an issue with kickback. Now luckily, still have all my fingers and toes, uh, but I do have a bruise where the part flew back and hit me in the stomach. Uh, and not to mention, it ruined the part that I was going to use for one of the box lids, and it was a really nice piece of that spalted pecan. But now it has a big swirl mark, which I'll show you in just a second, that uh, renders it useless. But uh, I'd much rather, you know, scrap this piece of wood than be injured or, you know, hurt or anything. And luckily, as I said, I have a lot of padding on because it's cold here. I happen to be wearing a sweater, but I did end up with a bruise in the belly. Uh, and to give you a little walkthrough, and I'm going to show you the scene as it happens, but to give you a little walkthrough, when I was cutting the piece, as I went to grab the piece to pull it away from the blade, it inadvertently, I spun it into the blade, and when it did, the blade picked it up and flung it into me. Uh, something that I always have a habit of is moving the pieces out of the way. I think the better way to do it is, is once you make your cut, let that sit where it needs to be, shut your saw off, let the blade stop completely, then move your part. Uh, you know, and I'm, it might be a new habit of mine because that was a little bit scary and, uh, you know, I've only had kickback happen once before. Uh, and it was on an older table saw. This is the first kickback I've ever had on this saw, and I'm usually always very safe. Uh, but yeah, it did happen. And another reason why it happened is because earlier, when I was using my zero clearance plate, which this isn't it, I had to take out my riving knife and uh, in order to be able to use that zero clearance plate because the kerf in that zero clearance plate doesn't allow for the riving knife to be in. Well, I'm not using my zero clearance plate, I'm using my original throat plate. And my riving knife is not in here. Had my riving knife been installed, or if I would have reinstalled it uh, earlier, I would have, it would have prevented this from being able to kick back at me. So I'm going to take a minute and put my riving knife back in while you take a look at this clip. Pretty scary stuff, right? Well, now I have my riving knife back in, and as I said, if I would have had it in place, uh, if I would have put it back in place after I reinserted my original insert plate, that would have prevented it from ha the kickback from happening. Uh, because what had happened with this riving knife not in place, as I pulled this piece away, I had inadvertently turned it, and it allowed the teeth of the saw to pick up the board and kick it back at me. And as a result, you can see that swirl mark where it just picked it up and flung it. Uh, and as I said, this was uh, gonna be one of my lid pieces, but uh, you know, I'd much rather this be damaged than me. So now I have my riving knife back in place. I went ahead and cut a second part for the lid and now I can move forward. I just wanted to share that with you because, you know, uh, as I said, I always try to be safe, but no matter how safe that you think you are, accidents do happen when you least expect them. Okay guys, well I'm glad I was able to share that experience with you. Now I wasn't glad, I'm not glad that it happened. Uh, I'm glad that I was able to share that with you just to uh, be able to show you that no matter how safe you may think you are, accidents do tend to happen. But getting back to business and making these lids to finish up this project, 
uh, we're going to go ahead and I've got my two parts cut and a little bit of good news, the piece that got damaged the, with the swirl cut, I'm still able to use it. I just put it up to my piece and I realized that I had cut it way oversized. So when I cut it down to its final size, that damaged area is going to be removed. So I'll be able to use the original piece that I wanted to. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and clean up my parts on my sled and get them cut down to their final size. And then we're going to do some, we're, we're going to create a little rabbit on the bottom side so it fits inside this box nice and snugly. And then we're going to do some decorative edge cutting. Uh, we're going to be tilting the blade and angling this lid to kind of just give it a decorative feature. So let's go ahead and start by getting things cut down to their final size. Okay guys, on the table saw, I've got my blade tilted to nine degrees just to give a slight angle on this lid to give it a little bit of uh, a little extra flare. All right guys, something I want to mention to you real quick on these box lids. I would have liked to have had just a little bit more overhang uh, on the lid from the box. Um, right now I'm about a sixteenth of an inch all the way around, a little bit overhang. I would like to have had an eighth inch overhang all the way around, but uh, I ended up cutting my lids just a little too narrow, a little too, you know, on all four sides. Um, and if I would have caught it in time, I would have changed it up. But, I mean, it, all in all, it's still going to look fabulous. Don't get me wrong. But uh, I would like to have had a little bit more overhang. So, one thing I can say, and it's all a preference and all, but you wouldn't want the bottom of the lid flush with the sides of the box. It just has a, it, it doesn't have a, a nice look to it, in my opinion. So, I think next time on the next few boxes I make, I'll uh, make my lid just a little bit wider, a little bit longer, and um, have just a little bit more overhang. But, since we have it like that, we've already went ahead and cut the 9 degree angle on all four sides. Now, I've got a half inch straight cut router bit in my uh, router table, got my fence set up. Uh, to go ahead and cut a rabbit on the bottom side of all four, you know, uh, of this so that it creates like a little lip that will fit inside this box. And what I want is I want to sneak up on this cut really well because I want you to have to be able to pop the lid off, you know, pull it apart. I don't want it to be able to just fall off and everything. I want, if I hold this box upside down, I want that lid to stay in there. So I've got the bit about an eighth inch high and I've got it set right now to make a quarter inch cut. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my cut on all four sides, move my fence back a little, cut a little more, until, and I'm gonna keep testing my fit until I have the right fit. Alright guys, well the boxes are almost done. The lids are on and those little 9 degree angle cuts really make for a nice touch on these boxes. And as you can tell, I angled the grain direction on one of them uh, just to, even though they're the same boxes, same material, it just kind of gives them two different looks. Uh, and on this one I included a little bit of a knot that I wanted just an added feature. Uh, these will look great once we get the finishing all on them. But there's one last little detail that I want to do is we're going to put a 45 degree, a small 45 degree chamfer around all four sides of the bottom of this box uh, just to give it an added extra detail. But the lids fit perfectly. Uh, you've got that nice little suction pop sound, you know, when you take it off. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's what you want. Just a nice fit when everything is together, you know, the lids don't come off. Uh, so I'm very happy with the fit of the lids and sneaking up on those cuts is real important to get that fit. So let's go ahead. I'm going to change in uh, my router bit from the straight bit to the chamfer bit. We're going to make that small little detail and then we're going to go ahead and sand these up and get a finish on them. Alright, by creating that chamfer on the bottom, 
it creates that shadow line across the bottom of the box and just gives it a nice added little feature uh, to go along with all the other features that we've added to it. So all in all, everything is ready to go. All we have to do is a little bit of hand sanding and put a finish on it. For the finish of the boxes, I'm going to apply two coats of Danish oil. Now the Danish oil will bring out all the natural colors in the spalted pecan, the white oak and the mahogany, and it'll do it beautifully. Uh, two coats will be just fine for these small little projects and it'll just add that final touch. Well guys, that wraps up this project for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Now something new, if you want to follow me throughout the week on little things that I'm doing as well as you know some behind the scenes while I'm making these videos, check out keek.com uh, and I'll leave a link down in the description. I've been keeking every day so uh, it's another way to just kind of follow along with what I'm doing. So be sure to check out that link down in the description and follow me on Keek and uh, get to see what I'm doing behind the scenes as well as uh, things that you might not see in the video. Alright guys, until next week, I'll see you soon.